So my name is Tinko Tinev and I'm sharing my short stories with you. Um, I was talking about the confusion in the value system in my socialist communist country, um, which it was suffering from identity crisis. It couldn't decide if it was a communist or a socialist or it was also claiming to be democratic um, and denying capitalism, but encouraging capitalism. So it was a very confusing place um, for someone who was really seeking answers. And I didn't even know I was seeking for answers. <clears throat> I just wanted to know how things work. So the more you try to find out how socialism works, you realize it doesn't and it cannot. Um, um, it was very sad conclusion, I guess. It's not, it's not a critique uh, to criticize, you know, people's beliefs, or it's just, um, it's a sad, the sadness of the conclusion is that if you want to be a, um, you can say, dreamer socialist, uh, there are no tools in socialism to become a moral citizen. Um, so I guess very naturally, um, as my I entered into my, into my late teens. Uh, these dark clouds <laughs> were enveloping uh, my mind, I guess, but I guess the whole communist system, because when I was 18, the communist bloc collapsed, and um, it felt very unreal because many many believed and i mean we were led to believe and we had to believe that this was a really unbreakable system and glorious system and victorious system and and there it was suddenly gone and uh it was the communists <laughs> who were celebrating the destruction of the communist system uh on the squares and you know uh, many communists paraded as Democrats uh, and anti-communists. And so overnight, suddenly, uh, from this uh, very rigid and solid dream, uh, it was just gone. And not just gone, it was gone in, in a paradoxical way <laughs> with people uh, who until yesterday were saying that... Uh, listen, this is the best place in the world. And they were jumping on the streets and, you know, claiming that, uh, yeah, so much damage was done and they were victims of communism and suffered all their lives and asked for reparations and extra benefits now for the hardship of their lives. And uh, it was just confusing, I guess. Um, so for me... Um, I didn't know how this fits <laughs> with life at all and with my life. I was just trying to figure out how is um, how 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 can I live a, a, a life that makes some sense at all. Uh, so um, about when I was eleven, um, I was I guess experiencing the you know, the unhappy or the struggles of my parents. And they were both drinking and smoking. And uh, yeah, when people drink, they don't look really their best. So I just felt like I really wish I wouldn't be such a person um, that would drink and uh, lose their, not mind, but like control of the situation con and like self-respect and respect of others. Because when you're drunk, uh, it seems it's so easy to do it. Um, and it's very, e very difficult for others to respect um, a person in this state. So I was just thinking, what, what would be better than this? Um, and this really, it's not really my idea, I guess. I just stumbled upon the idea that uh, it would be nice to have an ideal family. And for some reason, it just felt very... It made sense to me. And that, you know, probably the best thing you can do in your life is to try and create an ideal family, build an ideal family. Um, and that's... <laughs> it, it's very easy said. Uh, 
But if one tries to understand what an ideal family is, it's actually not easy at all to understand what is an ideal family. And um, I thought finding true love is um, is going to fix, you know, it's going to, you know, kind of create an ideal family. So I was wondering what true love is. And um, according to romantic understanding and, you know, the atheistic uh, country I lived in anyway, at that time, a true love was to find, um, seemed, seemed like true love was to find an ideal partner. So I was trying to understand what that means. Um, and if one tries to follow the popular culture of just, you know, like boyfriend, girlfriends, casual relationships, um, it's hard to find, I don't know, it's it's not hard to find the right person, I guess. it's. Uh, I found that um, upon reflecting later on, I wasn't really thinking about this when you know, I was going through my teenage years, but later on I was thinking and um, I realized that through this kind of lifestyle, I couldn't be the, I couldn't be the right person for anybody. Uh, it sounds strange. To me, it also strong, sounds strange. Uh, sounded strange um, when I realized it. But I realized if if you want um, true love, um, which means like we are all looking for this one partner. So if if one wants to find that one partner, one has to become that partner, and. It, it was a very shocking revelation to me because you know, it would it would have been so easy if there was just the right partner and you just find the right partner and you live happily ever after. That's you know like such a beautiful thing you know find somebody to make you happy and you make them happy and um, but it's not so easy uh, because uh, if you live with someone. Uh, your personal space has to be limited. So you have to sacrifice your personal space. You have to sacrifice your decisions and choices for someone else. Um, and, and that's not an easy thing to do. So um, really, I was led to understand that uh, you can't find an ideal partner if you don't become an ideal partner. And, well, that was a shocker. <laughs> Yeah, I'll see you later in another episode.